if I had to boil it down to three, and there's a few more, but these are the three most critical. It is knowing who your customer is at a very deep level. It's called your avatar is the acronym that's kind of used in the online community, but it's knowing that individual at a very deep level and knowing what their pain points are and then taking those pain points or those problems and showing them and demonstrating to them how your product or service can solve that problem. The mistake people make is they don't go deep enough understanding what I call their avatar. Now, the great news is we are in early 2023 and the release of some new artificial intelligence tool has hit the marketplace. Artificial intelligence is not new. It's been around for a while, but there's been some newer developments, newer tools in the marketplace, which has really opened up the floodgates to a lot of people. If you can utilize those tools, because that's what they are, they're just tools to help you do some of that research a lot quicker. Because in the past, big companies had to have big budgets, right? And they had to do with these focus groups and do all this stuff to really understand their customer. You don't have to do that at all anymore. Even prior to these AI tools, you could do it online. But now with the AI, you can do it literally in this matter of minutes, but you have to know where to go and how to prompt the AI tools to get that data. That's the hard part. But the good news is it's available to anybody if you know what those prompts are. So the reason that that's important is when you understand those frustrations, those pain points, those challenges of your ideal customer, you can then demonstrate through the video, through written word, and through marketing how you can solve that problem. Because again, you're going to need at the end of the day to get eyeballs to your, if you're getting trying to e-commerce or or SaaS, you're going to need to get eyeballs to your website or however you're going to actually take that transaction. And you don't need to do anything clickbaity or any spammy or anything nefarious. You don't need to. A lot of people fall into that trap. It's not needed to do this ethically and do it the right way because you can still build this asset up and sell it, right? That's another one thing is knowing who your avatar is and getting really, really deep on who that person is. The next thing is to build an email list. I know a lot of people kind of cringe at that. I used to because you're like, oh, I don't want to build a list. It takes a lot of work. And I don't want to spam people because nobody wants to be receiving spam and nobody wants to, if you're an ethical person wants to be sending out spam However, at the end of the day, what is an email list? Now it's also an SMS list, right? And SMS is the same way. Nobody wants to spam people through text messages and through SMS. I get that, right? However, if you use it effectively, at the end of the day, you are opening up an opportunity to solve a problem for either your current customer or your existing customer. And what is it? It's actually eyeballs and attention, right? That is how a small business, especially a new one starting out, can compete with big companies. Let me give you a good example. When we were running our e-commerce business and we were chugging along. My wife and I were fortunate enough, both like to travel. We were doing well enough. We were traveling the world. And here was a guy on his laptop literally traveling the world and I was competing against one of our top competitors was running television ads, which is the most expensive medium to get sales in primetime television. And I would see those ads and I would laugh. Once I understood what was going on here, I'm like, I'm a guy with my laptop, but I'm not spending millions of dollars. I'm spending just a little bit of money here, but yet we're making profit and we're growing the business. And yet we were traveling the world and our business was growing and it was crazy. Once I understood how all those things came together, it was mind blowing, but you had to go through all those rough spots to get that. So that's the second one is building a list and then effectively not spamming people, but you have to communicate with people frequently. A lot of people think, I don't want to bother people. I don't want to spam them. People are not thinking about our business as much as we are because it's what we do. They're busy with their lives. We all are on email lists. We get an email. You're like, oh yes, I know them, but I don't have time for this. I'm not going to bother to read this. I'm not going to unsubscribe. And even if I keep getting emails, I'm not going to do that. And if I wanted to, I will do that. And that's okay, right? I understand that that's okay. But at the end of the day though, people are not paying attention to us as much as we think they are we would like them to, but that's the reality. But that's why you need to build a list because then it becomes just more numbers per se. And you don't even have to have a big list to make that list produce revenue and profit for you. Which leads into the third point is if you build a list, you can create sales with people on multiple occasions because then the day you need to know your numbers of your business front to back and back to front. That is one thing that I did understand very acutely when I started this is I needed to know my numbers. And I literally knew my numbers down to the penny and that's how I could compare compete with one of our biggest competitors who was running primetime television ads because I didn't need to. I was running ads on just social media and we were competing. We weren't making millions of dollars, but I was generating tons of revenue and profit for us to be able to grow our business to seven figures. Again, once I understood how all that stuff worked. So the three things again are knowing your avatar at a deep level, which I did know, so we could communicate and show them how we could solve their problem. We built a list. We didn't do a great job of it. I, that was one of the mistakes we made, but I understood this. Now I really understand it because I'm selling these businesses. It's the number one mistake every business that we sell makes is I'll ask them, 
how big is your list and how much is it making you? And they don't know the answers. The latter part of that question is they don't know how much is making them and they should know that down to the penny every month. And they don't, or down to the dollar and it's sad because they're leaving money on the table when they go to sell their asset. But that's a little bit related. And the third thing again is just knowing your numbers.